When I was a student studying elasticity, there were so many formulas in my textbook, and I had a really hard time keeping them straight. And it wasn't until I started teaching economics that I realized there's only one formula to remember. Every time you have an elasticity, it's always a percentage change in quantity divided by a percentage change in something else. And the cool thing is if you know this formula, we can look at the name of the elasticity, and that will tell us what this formula is going to be. So first of all, price elasticity of demand. All right. When we break this formula down, we're going to need to know what's the quantity and what's the something else. So the first word, price, tells us the something else. And that's going to go on the bottom. Check out these color-coded things right here. And whatever comes after the word of tells us the quantity. All right, so we need a quantity, and this says demand, so that's quantity demanded. And now let's do a price elasticity of supply. Okay, now something else is price, quantity is supply. All right, so now we get quantity supplied over price. We're looking at these percentage changes. Moving on to income elasticity. Now, its full name is income elasticity of demand. A lot of times you'll see it with the of demand omitted. But if we omit that, then I won't know the formula based on the name of the elasticity. So here we go. Of demand means we need quantity demanded, and that something else is income. Now, cross price elasticities can be a little bit tricky, right? They're usually phrased cross price elasticity of good X with respect to Y. What does cross price even mean? Right? It's not an own price, right? So we're looking at a quantity of X, but we're not looking at the price of X. We're looking at the, the cross price, the price of something else, the price of this other good Y. All right, so still, whatever comes after this word of, that's the quantity we want, so quantity demanded of X, and the first words, that gives you the something else. So cross price says the price, but it's not the price of X, it's the price of this other thing. All right, so the cross price is the price of Y. Now, we have to be careful with cross price elasticities because if we flip them around, we'll get a different answer. Right? So the cross price elasticity of X with respect to Y is not the same as cross price elasticity of Y with respect to X. Right? So let's pull up these formulas here. So this one, we have the quantity demanded of X because that comes after this of. Over here, we have the quantity demanded of Y on top. And on the bottoms here, we have the price of the other good, right? So not the price of X here, it's the cross price, the price of Y. Over here, this isn't the price of the same good, it's the cross price, the price of the other good. It is possible for these things to be equal, but it is certainly not necessary. But they do have to have the same sign. Remember, signs of cross price elasticity tell you if goods are complements or substitutes. So if I say that coffee and tea are substitutes, I can also say that tea and coffee are substitutes. It shouldn't make any sense if I take them in the reverse order for the relationship to turn from substitutes to complements. 